Arizona Living, Your Life, Your Style. I'm your host, Kate Longworth. Well, after the challenging year we've all had, a change of scenery and a list of things to do may be just what you need. And as temperatures start to cool down, it's the perfect time to get out and explore Arizona. So let's let the fun begin. Here's what's ahead on today's show. A family adventure to see the animals at Wildlife World Zoo plus a trip to Desert Diamond Casino in Southern Arizona. And we look at a campaign helping to combat cyberbullying. All that and much more coming your way on Arizona Living. The Wildlife World Zoo Aquarium and Safari Park is now reopened for families to enjoy with new safety protocols in place. I had the chance to explore the great space back in December and wanted to share the experience with you. We are back here at the Wildlife World Zoo and Aquarium with Lauren. And Lauren, just taking this all in, there's so much to explore as we've discussed. But it's not just about animals. You offer a lot of rides and attractions here. Can you expand on what people can experience? Here at Wildlife World Zoo, we have 10 different rides, like our zip line that's 250 feet long. And we also have fun things like our log flume ride if you want to get a little wet. So not only do you get to experience all the animals here, you also get to have a ton of fun while doing so. And what other attractions do you have? What type of hands-on experiences, shows? Here at the zoo we have our wildlife encounter show that occurs three times a day. It's free with admission and our lorry parrot feeding that's also included. Um, I have a couple of little ones at home so we love petting zoos in our household. You guys have a petting zoo here. What do the kids get to experience with that? At the petting zoo you get up close and personal with some of your favorite critters like deer and even baby llamas and you get an opportunity to feed them too. And you guys also um, have an aquarium here. What is that experience like? Yes, our aquarium is wonderful. There's many different species of fish and aquatic mammals, both from freshwater and saltwater. And when you um, come out here, there's a lot of area to explore. So what do you recommend for families on how they should navigate this area so they get the full experience when they're out here? Well, our park is 108 acres, so we always recommend coming first thing in the morning, planning to spend the entire day here. We have tons of cafes, you can absolutely get lunch along your way. And obviously I would think comfortable shoes, clothing, and are there any other things like that if folks are planning to come out here that they should do um, to prepare for the experience or to pack? You should absolutely have sunscreen on hand because it's a big part and although we have lots of shade trees here in Arizona, we do get a lot of sunshine. And then lastly, what are the hours that you guys are open? We are open from 9 to 6 in the zoo portion and the aquarium stays open until 7. So I always recommend hitting up the zoo first and then heading over to the aquarium. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today and being with us. And if you want to head out here to the Wildlife World Zoo, please visit their website for any more information. Time now to test your luck. We're taking a trip to Tucson for an entertaining time at Desert Diamond Casino. Hi, my name is Trina Parvello and I am the Director of Government and Public Relations for Desert Diamond Casinos. During this time, we've had um, numerous safety measures that we've implemented. So our team members, our guests, and everyone who enters the building, uh, their safety has been a top priority for us. So we've implemented uh, mandatory face coverings for everyone who walks through the door, uh, temperature taking for everyone who walks through the door, if they're coming through the front door as a guest or through the back of house for our team members. So there's been uh, numerous um, safety measures that we've implemented for their safety. Hi, my name is Danielle Chilton. I'm the general manager for the Southern Arizona properties for Desert Diamond Casino. The guest experience is always a priority with Desert Diamond Casino. Once you arrive here, you can enjoy the newest, greatest slot machines, exciting table games. We've gone to extreme measures to ensure that there's social distancing so the guests can play safely within our properties. Uh, we also have special clean teams that are available that you'll see on the gaming floor, cleaning, wiping down machines, wiping down chairs, just again, for that safe experience. Then really has impacted every part of the facility from the guest experience, from the team member experience, 
facility itself, uh, maximizing the HVAC system, limiting the games, um, just so we can make sure that everyone is safe as possible. When guests sign up for our reward center, um, it's free, it's no cost to our guests, uh, but it makes them eligible for special promotions, free play on the slot machines, discounts at our dining venues. So it's really a reward. Again, the more you play, the more you earn. Hi, I'm Brian Franz. I'm the executive chef at Desert Diamond Casinos. Our menu is developed based off our guest love for our Sonoran Desert flavors. And it is such a joy to work with these ingredients each and every day. Here at the Tucson location, we broaden our food court menu where you have something for everyone. Something quick, grab and go to fine dining elegance. We also have our tree bar and Kino bar with some great daily specials. At our Sarita location, we have taken our menu and expanded it as well and implemented a number of taste of agaves of our local favorites where we're known for our fine cuisine as well. Desert Diamond Casino has had a wonderful relationship with community organizations throughout um, our operation. And so during this time, it's been no different. We've supported the community. We've actually provided some um, lunches and food for the first responders and for the um, essential workers on the nation. So it's really important that we continue to build that relationship, to be a part of the community and to help out where we can. On those days you just don't feel like leaving the home, why not bring the fun and games to you? It's a great time to invest in oversized lawn games like checkers, bowling, even Yahtzee. These giant versions of traditional games will bring entertainment for hours for everyone in the family. But don't go enjoying the games quite yet. We still have more fun coming your way on Arizona Living. We'll see how the Maricopa County Attorney's Office is battling cyberbullying. And sitting at your desk all day can take a toll. The doctors at Honor Health give us some tips to ease the pain. We've all seen technology take center stage during this pandemic, which is why online safety and information about cyberbullying is at the heart of a new campaign launched by the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Hi, my name is Jennifer Lewer, and I'm the Communications Director for the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Parents are always concerned about their children and, and the potential for bullying in school or at home. These days, um, bullying can happen in a variety of places. Any change in behavior by the child is an important thing for parents to look for. But it can go both ways. Are they being more outgoing? Are they more reserved? Um, a, a significant change in, in their eating patterns? It could be who they're hanging out with, if that's changed. I think the most important thing, though, is to really keep an eye out for a change in behavior, both online or in person. Social media has completely changed the landscape for how our children socialize. They are able to have 24-7 connections to the people that they are friends with. And what parents need to understand is that it, it is okay to place restrictions on their social media. It's easy with social media to depersonalize the communication that goes on because you don't say it to somebody's face. And we see this with children and adults. It's easier to say mean things or to speak in a way that isn't respectful because that person's not right in front of you. And so we have to remind our children that there is a person on the other side of that social media account. It's very important to talk with your children about empathy and trying to explain that we don't know what is going on with other families or other kids and to always put ourselves in the other person's shoes and how would we feel if that was being done to us. Hi, my name is Vanessa Seja and I'm the Community Affairs Coordinator with the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. Now, more than ever, it's, this is a difficult topic, talking about how to balance your time and how to limit the amount of time you spent on a device. And it's important that we identify 
what do we use this device for? What kind of content or apps are we using, our kids are using? How much time are we spending on them? And then where in our home are we using it? Having that framework beforehand will definitely give kids confidence to use those devices and be online in a safe way. One of my favorite ways to talk to kids about the internet and about interacting with other people online is that it's always Halloween on the internet. You never know who's behind the mask. You never know if they're wearing a costume or not. So you want to be really, really safe about who you're talking to online. And if you don't know them in person, if they're not your friend in real life, then maybe you shouldn't interact with them. Um, and that for kids, it should be a red flag if somebody starts talking to you and asking you questions about where you live, what your phone number is, what your email address is. All of those things should be a red flag to a kid and to a parent that, you know, maybe they need to talk about some online safety. We're all feeling the stress of these times, but fortunately, help is here. Honor Health has a new hospital in the North Valley and taking care of your aches and pains is what their orthopedics department is all about. So sit back, relax, and take a look. I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona and uh, attended undergraduate uh, at Arizona State University and then medical school at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in Phoenix. Um, I then moved to Tucson to complete residency training at the University of Arizona Medical Center and then did a fellowship in joint replacement at Stanford University. I perform joint replacement surgeries and revision joint replacement surgeries on both the knee and hip and also provide non-operative treatment of knee and hip conditions. Honor Health is opening two orthopedic surgery uh, offices, one here at Sonoran Crossing and the other in Scottsdale at the Scottsdale Shea Hospital. Uh, that location will open October 26, 2020. Uh, in my mind, probably one of the best aspects of being a hospital employed orthopedic surgeon is that I don't have to worry about overhead and I can take my time um, to take care of patients and do the right thing for them and not have to worry about how I'm going to keep the lights on. Um, so in my mind, that's probably the best thing about working for Honor Health. Uh, they also have spent a considerable amount of time and energy investing in state-of-the-art operating rooms and acquiring the best technology to help me take better care of patients. Orthopedic surgery is a rapidly evolving uh, subspecialty in medicine and we're fortunate to have access to the latest in robotic um, knee replacement uh, tools here as well as uh, offering our patients uh, anterior total hip replacements. With the uh, stay at home orders that are kind of sweeping the nation with COVID-19, I'm seeing a lot of folks just coming with joint aches and pains which is really common when people assume a more sedentary lifestyle. The human body was really designed to move and uh, you can imagine that sitting still things get stiff and painful and getting them moving again can be quite painful as well. One, uh, one concern patients frequently have is how well their pain will be controlled after surgery and we're doing a variety of things now to make the surgery and recovery quicker and uh, less painful and one of those things would be beginning pain medications before the incision and then getting patients moving early, uh, both of which have been shown to reduce pain and facilitate recovery. One piece of advice I would offer to folks having some aches and pains related to assuming a more sedentary lifestyle is to get up and get moving. Uh, one of our common sayings in orthopedic surgery is that life is motion and motion is life. So I'd encourage folks to find a comfortable, low impact activity such as walking, cycling, or swimming uh, to get their joints and muscles moving again. The two new Honor Health offices will provide comprehensive operative and non-operative treatment of any bone and joint disorder. I'm proud to be a part of Honor Health because they offer all of the resources of a large healthcare institution with the feel of a small community hospital. With fall upon us, it's a great time to get outside and a fun activity that never gets old is hiking. It allows you the opportunity to safely social distance while taking in the beauty that the desert has to offer. But before you head out to the great outdoors, we still have more Arizona living coming your way. Taking control of your retirement finances with five key strategies. Plus we show you where you can learn all about the history of the West. Time to 
to explore is one of the wonderful luxuries of retirement. But before you can retire, you need financial security, which is where Winston and companies can help. The financial industry is a personal touch business. It's, it's about creating relationships. We want to assure a positive outcome for our clients' retirement experience. And we do that by using the flight plan, a written plan of action to assure that your retirement experience is on track. Winston & Companies is a family-run business. Back in the beginning days with door-to-door -door debit route collection service, and my wife, Millie, was always involved, backing me up the whole way. And so it was always Millie and I running things. We started it in my garage at my house when my good friend, John Roller, uh, joined me. And we worked out of there for several years until we started doing well. And we built the business into the company that it is today. My son, he has brought so much to our company from a technological standpoint, from a youth standpoint, and the viewpoint of a younger mind. What are the five main focus points of our practice? Again, I reference you to our logo and the five stars above the aircraft. The first star represents income planning, which AARP says is the number one concern of retirees going into retirement. That fear of running out of money and income. The second area is investment planning. We are a fiduciary investment advisory group and we manage portfolios for people and we do a better job than they probably could do on their own, especially as they age. Their propensity to deal in complex money management issues doesn't get better. It usually starts to abate. The third area right above the tail of the aircraft, is tax planning. What we do is we do holistic tax planning. The fourth area of our practice is in healthcare planning. It is a major part of our practice that many of our competitors simply don't get involved in. And the fifth area of our practice, the, the last area, perhaps maybe one of the most important is legacy planning. Wills, trusts, powers of attorney. So many people reach their 50s and 60s and they do not have even a will because they were busy in life and they just didn't get it done. We invite you to come on down and, and meet us at Winston & Companies because we want to connect with you. Come on in, have a cold drink, have a cup of coffee and get to know us because at Winston & Companies, we are all about forming that relationship and that lifelong bond with our clients. Stick around, we still have more Arizona Living coming your way. We get a lesson in the Western spirit at a museum in Scottsdale. Scottsdale's Museum of the West will give you a true taste of that Western spirit. We had a chance to visit them earlier this year and they are now reopened with new safety protocols in place. Hi, my name is Dean Scheinert and I'm the Chief Advancement and External Affairs Officer here at Western Spirit. Scottsdale's Museum of the West. There is a lot of mystery and seduction around the West, and I think it has a lot to do with the pioneering spirit um, that is synonymous with the West, and um, the, the risk-taking that involved with settling the West, and obviously the natural beauty. So the whole idea for this museum came about probably over 30 years ago. It was the vision of former mayor of Scottsdale, Herb Drinkwater, who really wanted to celebrate the history of the West, the people, the culture, the traditions. It took almost 30 years to make it happen, but what better place 
to have a museum that celebrates Western culture than here in the heart of Scottsdale, Old Town Scottsdale, the West's most Western town. We were one of the youngest institutions to ever receive the Smithsonian affiliation. And we received it in November 2015, just eight months after we opened our doors. We're very proud of that. What's remarkable about our collections is that many of the pieces date back centuries. We have um, our Hopri canvas of clay uh, collection. It is uh, probably the best, most treasured example of Hopi pottery past, present, and future. And as with all of our Native American exhibits, we not only want to show the pieces, but we also want to reflect a deep honor and respect for the Native American population in general for all their contributions to make the West what it is today. Upstairs, we have the tomahawk pipe that was owned by Meriwether Lewis, who led the Lewis and Clark expedition back in the early 1800s. And that is an original piece owned by um, Captain Lewis, and we have it right here in our venue. Come visit us. We are more than just a museum. You'll have a, a wonderful experience here. But if you really want to get to the essence of the West in general, this place has it. I'm Kate Longworth. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you're able to get out there and safely explore. And we'll see you next time on Arizona Living, your life, your style, where we help you live your best life.